Welcome once again to the chat room. Nice to have your company doing the chatting, the Dean of Sydney, Philip Jensen. Philip, hi. Hello, Kel. Now, for today's topic, I used to work years ago with an old journo, a bloke named Mark Day, who started his career as a young journalist at a Melbourne newspaper called Truth. And he said to me once, he was telling me the story about, as a very young cadet journalist, he was down in the, the room with all well, the printing presses late one night when they were running off the next day's paper. And he said to this old printer, he said, why do they call this paper Truth? And the old bloke thought for a minute and then he said, probably no one would buy it if they called it lies. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we might talk about... Tr- <laughs> Good, I like yeah, it. Truth and lies, what we're yes. going to talk about. Philip, does everyone lie? Is it universal? Yes, we are all lies. There was an interesting um, experiment I saw in um, California, of all places. You feel sorry for the Californians somehow, um, where they tape recorded people for a couple of weeks and then they went back over the tapes to hear what they talked about and they found that they lied in California on average once every eight minutes. <laughs> and they're probably not all that abnormal. No, no. In fact, I would have thought it was much more than that. They're just the ones they were able to identify. It, it, people still don't like being told it and in fact will deny it. I mean, it's possible for some to say, well, yeah, I, I occasionally tell lies, but that doesn't mean I'm a liar. Yes, yes, that's right. I mean, it, it's like most people think they're good, even though they occasionally do bad things. And so I saw, uh, I think it was in this morning's paper, that uh, uh, one of the mafia had been, had died, and the family was saying what a good man he was. Yes. And of course he was good to his family. He just killed other people involved in order to be good to his family, and sold drugs and all kinds of bad things. But he's a good person. But he's a good person. I I, I had a story in the news last week about um, uh, a drug dealer who had been killed, been murdered, so it was was really sad for the family, and his sister was saying, just because he was a drug dealer, it doesn't mean he was a bad man. No, not at all. So we don't want to believe, even though we tell lies, we're liars. No, because one of the people we lie to most is ourselves. And we convince ourselves oh, more than we convince so anyone else. Really. There used to be another newspaper here in Sydney called The Mirror. Right? Well, it was a very distorted mirror. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Convex, <laughs> concave, but it certainly wasn't a true statement. Now, if we're, we're all telling lies at points in our lives, and we're te- we may be telling lies every eight minutes, this can't be a good thing. This must be undesirable, surely. Oh, it's a dreadful thing. Lying is dreadful. We all hate people telling us lies. Yes. Uh, you never have some people really enjoying lies. They hate lies. They, they want to sing songs about honesty, you know, and, and they want truth in relationship. But yet we don't like telling lies. Uh, the scriptures say that, that uh, the lying tongue actually hates its victims. It is, it is damaging a relationship and damaging Always people. Always damaging relationships, and it means I don't really trust you with the truth. I don't trust you with... See, I'm, I'm not talking about telling things that are inaccurate. I can tell things that are inaccurate because I don't know any better. Yes. So I think that uh, Osaka is in Germany. Uh, then I say, well, Osaka's in Germany. Then I'm not telling a lie because I don't know any better. I'm just telling something that is inaccurate. But telling lies is to say, I know Osaka's in Japan, but I don't want Kel to know that. Yeah, it's an intentional thing. It's an intentional thing. And so it's why, a hatred. why would we do that? Why do we intentionally say things we know are not true to other people? Hey, there's, there's lots of reasons in terms of the psychology of it. Um, uh, that psychology study from California was said really it lying it had a non-moral attitude to lying, the psych study, and it said it's like the, the oil in the machine, it keeps the parts working. And so if we told each other the truth, we couldn't actually function. There was a movie made along the thing called Liar Liar, where this man kept on blurting out what he really thought and, and how his life was all destroyed as a result. And the machinery of, the truth. of society breaks so, down, they, yeah. they, they say. So, but why? Well, the classic one is uh, fear. I'm afraid of the consequence of truth. So you say, did you steal? Well, if I say yes, I'll be put away. So I'll say no. And so it's that protection which little children have as a protection for out of fear of what's going to happen. It's uh, partly because I'm, I'm trying to take you down, I'm trying to sell you a dodgy set of scales. And so I will tell you lies for that reason. It can be because I'm trying to impress you. You I know. want you to think well of me, I so I'm, think, yes. Really? So I, I've done all these wonderful things, and mm. I, I gild the lily is the phrase, isn't it? Or, Gilding gold or paint the lily. Is that the phrase? Yes, yeah, Where does that come from? Uh, 
I think it comes from Shakespeare, but don't push me. Well, don't worry, you're ahead of me. You knew the whole <laughs> quote. I think you're just gilding the lily. And so it's this, uh, this trying to impress people. Um, there's, there's the real me, and then there's the me that I want you to think that is me, and then after a while there's the me that I think I am, which is quite some distance away from the real me, and so partly it just becomes a matter of habit. It's just more convenient, it's easier to life it's easier. sometimes. Sometimes, yes, but also when I've done it long enough, I come to believe it. Yes. And so I don't know where that lie stops being a lie, but I, I tell the story, I tell the story, I embroider it, I, I you know, make it better and better, and then after a few years, I actually think that's what happened back then. Yes, um, yeah. It just becomes a, a habit with some people. So we use, they're, they're in a sense, the psychological reasons for using lies, but but why? Are, what does the Bible say about why we are liars? Why we why we have those uses? Why we need those things? Yeah, um, we we have an old phrase, don't we? But uh, oh, the tangled web we weave that when first we practice to deceive. But one of the great problems of the lying is you've got to remember all the time. So if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember anything. Yes. But once you tell a lie, you've got to remember the lie that you've told so as to make sure that you won't make a mistake in the repeating of it. And one lie, one shift in the truth will affect other bits of the truth. There's rarely a piece of information that is discrete in and of itself. Every piece of information is connected to every other piece of information. The more fundamental the lie, the more pieces of information are affected by it. And suddenly you're inventing other lies to yeah. reinforce the, yeah. the original lie. The original lie. So if I say to you, my favourite colour is red when it's green, that's not going to do much. But if I say my name is Fred Bloggs and I'm not Philip Jensen, well then I've now got to create a whole Fred Bloggs. And every time I, I see your photograph with Philip Jensen underneath, I say, Fred, this bloke looks so much like yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it gets complicated. It gets very complicated. And so the more fundamental the lie, the more multiple lies you have to tell in order to make sense to yourself as well as to the people you're telling it to. Now, the fundamental lie happens back in the Garden of Eden when we reject God, when we actually say God is not God, that I am God in my own life. When I accept the devil and his lies, then I build my whole life on the lie that I am not answerable to God that I can run my own life my own way. And that, and that connects to everything, so I have to lie about lots of things. Everything. Uh, every aspect of my being now actually is a lie, a whole lot of it. And so the little particulars of lies are just the symptoms of the fundamental disease. Because this is all the devil does. The power of the devil is lies. That's the power. He's a murderer and he's an accuser. But his key instrument is lies. Almost the first thing that the, the serpent does in the Garden of Eden is to tell lies. Exactly. And he says to the woman, you will not die, which of course God says you will die if you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he says to the woman, you'll become like God, knowing good and evil. Well, she already was like God. She was created in the image of God. But he now is holding out to her a lie. And... If you accept his lie, instead of becoming like God, I mean, she does, now she knows good and evil. Uh, verse 22 of chapter 3 of Genesis tells us that they do become like God in a new way. But instead of becoming like God in independence, what she does is she becomes under the authority of the evil one. So the promise is you will be able to be independent of God. But the reality is you become a slave of the devil. This becomes heavier and heavier for people, harder for people to accept. To accept that everyone is a liar is hard enough for a lot of people. Yes. Then to accept that the reason why we lie is because we resemble our father, the devil, who is alive. That's very hard. People don't want to believe that. That's right. I mean, Jesus talks about it being a slave. Uh, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. And again, people don't want to believe it. But it's, it's not hard to test. Um, See, Paul says in one part of the scriptures, the good that I want to, I can't, and the bad that I don't want to, I keep doing. Now, there's a little test of a slave. If you are free, you should be able to do all the good you want to. Yes. And yes. never do the bad you don't. 
And so you don't want to tell lies. In fact, my experience of most people is that they not only don't, they hate people telling them lies, but most of them actually don't want to tell lies. They want to be a truthful person. Try it for a while. Try to go through a whole day where they're telling yeah. a single lie. Yes. That's right. I used to have a man who used to call into church at coffee time at the end of church. <laughs> so he missed the church service. He missed the church service, right. but he'd come and have a little argument with me every Sunday night. And I was saying, all people are sinful. And he said, no, it's not true. So I said, well, go for a week. Come back here next week and tell me you've done nothing wrong all week. So he came back the next week and said, well, that was a bit hard. And I said, well, it's not really hard. I, you, you, you said well, you're not sinful. And uh, so on. He said, well, it's hard to define what good is and what... I said, telling lies. So he said, yeah, telling lies are bad. I said, oh, go for a week without telling a lie and come back here and we'll discuss it. So he turned up the next week, very shame-faced. And I said, what's your problem? He said, it wasn't fair. <laughs> I said, well, what do you mean it wasn't fair? You know? Simple test. Test, yeah. yeah. You know? He said, well, you know I've got a new job. And I said, have you? He said, yes, I started as a real estate agent. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Give me a different text. <laughs> Part of the job description. Yes. Now, okay, we could laugh at it, but it's pretty sad, isn't it, that you can't sell real estate without telling lies it or is. used cars or be a politician or be a journalist or be a... Or be... But it goes with the territory of being human. So if people want to say, no, no, I'm, I'm not a liar or I'm not a slave to lie, well, just try and stop. See how long you go. And when you say it's part of being human, we don't have to teach our children how to yeah. tell lies. They, no, no. they sort of work it out for themselves, don't they? One, one of my uh, children, one of my daughters, um, her first sentence was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> her first full sentence. She, her brother was at school and she stood in the lounge room with a little TV. Remember those little rabbit yes. e e e kinds of TV antennas? And she stood there with a TV antenna broken each hand and we walked in the room and she said Matthew did it <laughs> it wasn't there <laughs> it wasn't there first sentence Matthew did it three words <laughs> very impressive I, I, I had an even an even more creative experience because we walked into the the kitchen and there was our tiny son a little toddler and a big pool of sticky cordial on the floor yeah a long, long pause, and then he said, Teddy did it. <laughs> better than Matthew. <laughs> better than blaming it. Because he didn't have a brother to blame at this stage. And so it, it just runs in our very now. You don't have to teach your children to lie. They all do it without ever being taught. And the lies we tell in front of them are too sophisticated for most of them to understand. So it just comes. It just comes out of our very nature. Now, the big danger, the big problem with lying is that it's it's relational. Life is relational. Yes. And that's what we're damaging, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Always. Because relationships are built on trust. Well, lies undermine trust. Always. And so we, as soon as you meet someone, you trust them. Until they lie to you. And then you start to diminish your trust of them as, as each lie you discover. Now, because we're pretty good at lying, most people don't discover too many. But once you get a really big lie, then the, the trust in the relationship yeah, is destroyed. I'll be careful with that person. I, I, won't, I, I know I can't really count on them, trust them again. Yeah. I, I've noticed in, in counselling couples with uh, over adultery that it, it's never the sex that really upsets them. It's the lies. Mm. It's the cover-up. It's the, it's the unfaithfulness really destroys This person looked in my face and said, no, no, there's nothing going on, yeah. there isn't a problem. That's right. And how can I then trust this person from now on? Exactly. Yeah. And so telling lies is the destruction of relationship uh, because relationships are built on faith and trust. Some people will say, they'll come back and they'll say, but, but, there are times when you, you've got to be flexible with the truth in order to keep relationships going. I've got to tell a little white mm. lie. Mm. I can't say you look fat in that dress. I can't. I've got to, got to be diplomatic. What do we do with those things? Well, looking fat in a dress is the least of my problems about looking <laughs> in a dress. But yes, uh, well, God says in Zechariah, speak the truth. Right. And Ephesians 4 talks about um, uh, speaking the truth in love. Now, sometimes people say, well, in love means I can modify the truth. But it doesn't say, speak as much truth as loving. It says, speak the truth in love. So speak the truth gently. Well, it could graciously, be. Graciously. Graciously, yes. Diplomatically, but it's the truth. Yes, I've still got yeah. to speak. 
because God is truth. The Spirit is known as the Spirit of truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And God hates lying lips. And so just as the devil is the father of all lies, God is of truth. So you, you, it's not an area in which we can uh, negotiate around. Truth telling is what we are called upon to do. Now, how then do you live in this world which is so full of lies and negotiations and how flexible can we be with the truth? How do we maintain relationships? White lies don't exist, really. Lies don't have colours. No. No, no. I mean, you can distinguish. I, I can say, look, I, I think your tie um, uh, is not the most helpful one. That I mean, I can soft soap it one way or another. But still but, say the truth. Yes, I'd be still saying the truth, possibly. But if you said, do you like my tie? And I think it's hideous. And I don't think that tie's hideous. It's quite nice. <laughs> uh, but, and I think it's hideous. And I say to you, I know it really looks good with your eyes. The flat out lie. Yeah. It's a flat out lie. Yes. I might be doing it in a white lie in the sense that I'm trying to be nice to you, rather than a black lie where I think you look hideous and I hate you and therefore getting you outside looking hideous will be good. So that's mm. a black. So, so the intention it is slightly the different. The intention can be worse or better. Mm. But a lie is still unhelpful. Because if you do look hideous in that tie, how am I helping you by telling you you look good in it? So relationally, the, the best thing I might be able to say is, you know, sweetheart, don't appear in public in that dress. Yeah. <laughs> how you say that has got to do with how long you've been married and... Yes. You know, and how good you are at doing these how things. How good you are at doing these things. But if your wife looks hideous in a dress... You don't love her by letting her go out of it. Yep. So, so the white lie, the diplomatic lie, is still a lie and it's not it's helpful. That's right. And it also means, because over time she learns that your opinion is always coloured by this uh, white lies, she doesn't know whether they believe you or not. Okay. So you say, oh, that looks lovely. She says, oh, yeah, well, he always says that, doesn't he? So stop doesn't mean anything. Try to water down lying. Lying is lying. That's right. My, one of my daughters was playing the piano, learned to play the piano. And her teacher spoke to her. I said, well, what did the teacher say today? She said, oh, he said, I played really beautifully. It was absolutely magnificent. I said, that's fantastic. She says, no, he's paid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't help. No, flattery that's lying yes. actually doesn't help because she was only about eight or nine at that stage. But, but she could see it through it. Yeah. Uh, what about the problem cases in the Bible? People will point us to these. And I say, but there are problem cases. You know, uh, Abraham uh, lied about uh, saying that his wife was his sister or yeah. Rahab lied and when they said, you know, the Israelite spies. And she said, what Israelites? I haven't seen any. You know? yeah. now, there are lies in the Bible which don't always seem to be directly reprimanded. Yes. What, what sense do we, we to make yep. of those things? Uh, the Bible is not a book of Aesop's fables. The Bible is not a morality book. It's a book of the salvation of mankind through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in the Bible, events are accounted and people are accounted, warts and all, mistakes and all. So because we're all liars, lies are recorded. Lies are recorded. And you don't expect and you shouldn't expect in the Bible that every time someone does something wrong, they get chastised and they're going to be punished. Because that's not how life is. That is not how God has set the world up. And God uses our lies to bring about his purposes, just like he used the murder of his son to bring about his purposes. He's not approving of the murder of his son, and yet he uses the murderous intent of killing his son to save the world. So it's not saying he approved of uh, Rahab telling lies, but she told lies, and God used her lies to bring salvation and rescue to those particular spies. So it's there because it happened, not because God approves of it, or it's a model for us. Yes, that's right. Just record it. It's just there. Uh, and that's the reality. And that God can use it for good. Sometimes he can even uh, commend, and I think he does commend Rahab for her faith. He's not commending her for her lies, but for her faith. <laughs> that she sees that the God of Israel is more powerful and to be, be uh, afraid of than the gods of the Canaanites and the Jericho, people of Jericho. And so she supports the spies from Israel rather than the people. So that shows her faith in God. 
because she's not well taught in the ways of God, she may tell lies. When, when people get this far through considering the subject, the thing that's likely to come up is say, well, how on earth can we ever change? Yeah. We, we don't, you're right, we don't want to be telling lies. We want to be different people. So how on earth can we, living in a society that lies, lying from birth, lying because human nature is corrupted, how can we ever be different? Mm. Uh, never say another word to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you approach it both at the symptoms and at the disease, but it really helps to tackle the disease first. Because the fundamental disease is the rejection of God, all attempts to fix up the symptoms will come unstuck. I have to go back to square one and say, I am not God. God is God. And I cannot run my own life my own way. I need to hand my life over to him that it will be run his way, not my way. So giving up on the lie that I am God in my life is the first lie to give up on. You must give up that one. Without giving up that one, you will perpetuate the lies because you're still covering. Now, in giving up that one, I need to find forgiveness, which is what happens through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ for us. And if I don't know of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ for me, it's very hard for me to face the truth. So it's like the little child being accused of the breaking the TV or spilling the cordial. The parent is there. I've got no way of forgiveness. If I tell the truth, I'm going to be punished. Therefore, but once I know that Jesus has died for the sins of the world and for all my lies, then I can start facing up to the fact that I have rejected God and I'm living the life of a lie, knowing I can be forgiven for that. That means then actually facing myself. Now, it is sufficiently painful. Most of us don't want to do it. So we turn to alcohol or we turn to hedonism or we turn to gambling or we, we just turn, turn on the TV and block the, out the brain. Uh, yes, block out the brain. Doesn't even have to be evil things, although television might be. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 of course not. Um, but we, we just block. We, facing up to ourselves for what we really are like is relatively painful. And because we won't do it, we continue in our habits of telling lies. But once we've acknowledged that I am not God, God is God, I want him running my life and thanking him for the death of Jesus on my behalf, then I can start unravelling all the lies that I think I'm important because I'm so good looking. I, mean, I know you don't have that problem, but I do. Uh, I struggle. I, I, struggle. <laughs> or I think I'm you know, significant because I played cricket well or because I did exams well or because I'm... And, there's a, there's a lifetime mm. of unravelling, of reconstructing of myself. Now, only as I am doing that will my attempts at stopping the symptomatic lies start to disappear. I mean, what that, by looking at what you're talking about there, it demolishes this thing that people say of lying's unimportant. Yeah. Everyone does it, you know, I'm just like everyone else. When, when we see that Jesus had to die... Yes. To pay for the lies, suddenly how big lying is becomes clear. And when I see that I've got to spend all of my life to unravel this behaviour pattern, and I still won't finish it before the Lord Jesus returns, you see how totally enslaving and engulfing it is um, in myself. We take that, that crucial primary step of dealing with the disease, turning from our way to God's way, saying, I used to live like that. And I used to run my life, now I live like this, you run my life. Once we've taken that basic step, how do we then deal with the symptoms? Because, the, because that's, that's, it's like a bloke getting married. I mean, he doesn't get his character all fixed up until his wife's worked on him for years. I mean, there's a lot of work to do after you've taken the big step, isn't there? Most men remain bachelors in their lifestyle <laughs> until the first child has come along, <laughs> if not the second. That's one of the problems. Made worse in our generation because male brains don't actually kind of finish developing till their mid twenties. Um, if we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> you mean if we've got one? <laughs> yes. So so how do we deal how with a symptom deal? of lying? Well, one of them has got to do with apologies and restitutions. Right. Um, I remember telling a lie to one of the congregation members once and uh, it just really irritated me and irritated me and I 
And so I went, it was a little thing. I told him I'd prayed for him when in fact I hadn't. I mean, I had meant to, I had wanted to. If I'd thought of it, I would have, but I didn't. It's not good that I didn't pray for him and the problem he had at the time, but what was really bad was I told him I did hmm. when I didn't. The world didn't hang on that. And he would never never discover it. I don't think he would have ever discovered it. I don't think there's any way he would have discovered it. But I couldn't look him in the eye and and I couldn't say to anybody else I prayed for you even when I did because I didn't trust myself anymore. In this. So so this so I had to go back and say, I'm sorry I told you a lie. I didn't pray for you. Now that's scary in a sense, because what's he going to say? What's he going to do? What's he going to think of me? What's he going to think of me? There's a whole range of things. I mean, I don't like me now. He's not going to like me either. That makes two of us now. And so, but dealing with it solves a lot of the problem. Um, I've never gone back and apologised without somebody saying, that's all right, thank you for telling me. And yes. It, it's, it actually builds trust. Yes. Rather than undermining it. Yeah, if, if it matters that much to this person, I'm going to trust him. Yeah, more. And it's always egg on your face. You feel bad. You feel bad before, during, and after. after. <laughs> but it's the kind of bad feeling that stops you telling other people lies. And that's, that stops the pattern in future. Yes. Yep. It breaks the pattern. We've only just scratched the surface of what is an enormous topic. So 28 minutes covering of what we can about lying. Keep talking about it. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your Bible study group. And when you do, tell them the truth. <laughs> because that's the important thing. If you'd like to hear more from Philip Jensen, come along to St Andrew's Cathedral sometime. If you're in Sydney or visiting Sydney, we'd love to see you. Philip, thank you for chatting to us today. It's a pleasure. And we'll chat to you again next time on The Chat Room. Chat Room.